Custer, Wisconsin, a quiet rural village located seven miles from a Midwestern college town. Home to one antique shop, a post office, two bars, and 406 people. That is, 406 folks live there 362 days a year. But for three days each summer, the population explodes to nearly 20,000. Every June during summer solstice, Custer, Wisconsin hosts the world's largest alternative energy event, the Midwest Renewable Energy and Sustainable Living Fair. Renewable energy is a different kind of thing. And we're a little divorced from it. Eh? And the beauty of a fair like this is it's bringing people back in touch with sunlight and grass and flowers and trees and flows of energy, which are always going to dwarf fuels. Flows are much bigger than fuels. The sunlight hitting all these people outside the tent right now left the sun eight minutes ago it's hitting his hat, or this man's face, or that woman's body. It's traveled 93 million miles in eight minutes. It's hauling ass. <laughs> and it's not just a good idea, it's the law. Well, the MREA Fair is undoubtedly the granddaddy of them all. It's the number one biggest one. Uh, I know personally that uh, we model the Southern Energy and Environment Expo after the MREA Fair. Uh, I think the, the fairs around the country that are similar, that are most successful, follow the pattern of this fair. Have you guys been here before? No. I'll give you the quick layout here. Off to the right are the seminar and the workshop tents. They start every hour on the hour. Here's the matrix schedule on the yellow pages in your program book. That building with the windmill there is our main headquarters building. It also has the store. That's where you sign up for the uh, home tours and other things as well, some of the workshops. Quonset huts and everything behind it. There's quite a bit behind it. That's where all the exhibitors are set up. You have a map to them in your program guide. There's also a color-coded map right up there next to the message board. We have food vendors in each of the two areas, so if you don't like what's on one side, go to the other side. The other side of this blue and white stripe bitty one. Thanks. Thank you, sir. You bet. If you look at the statistics, uh, they get people here from 49 states and also internationally. You know, I've talked to people from England and Australia and uh, African countries and in other places as well. So I think this energy fair, uh, Obviously the fact that it's the largest in the world has an attraction there, but the fact that they draw people, uh, not only the visitors, but the exhibitors and vendors from all over the United States and Canada. So you have a, a really unique opportunity to see some of the best of everything that is available in renewable energy uh, and alternative systems and all in one place. I'm, uh, I'm the president of Arctic Glass and Window and our particular booth is trying to convince people to build sunrooms and solar homes with surplus patio door glass, which we have been selling since 1979. Probably sold 100,000 of these. And you've been at this uh, festival? Every year but the first year. This is the best so far. How would you compare it to uh, other festivals? It's the best organized, my wife says, because it's mostly organized by women. I've been to some very poorly organized festivals, and this one is very well done. We started the fair in 1990 to commemorate the 20th anniversary of Earth Day. And at that first fair, we had 3,000 attendees. We offer over 175 exhibitor spaces at the fair. And exhibitors include nonprofit organizations, manufacturers, dealers, distributors, and 80% of our exhibitors return year after year.
The Energy Fair takes place every June in Custer, Wisconsin, the weekend of summer solstice, which is the longest day of the year and therefore has the most sunshine. The jig is up. I'd like to speak to the executive producer now. The jig is up. It's very clear. So people kept calling in BAI, and this is the power of media activism. I said, don't call us. I don't know why they're not airing. Global oil production peak is not 10, 20, 40 years down the line. 80% of the workers losing ground. What we are against is beginning to divine us. We are now using in the United States 140 pounds of petroleum and petroleum products per person per week. We're consuming our body weight in oil products each week in the United States. It's a fascinating phenomenon. 200 million times each week an American goes into a gas station to get a tank full of gasoline. Somebody wrote, humanity has a method of converting sand into a semiconductor materi material that can take in sunlight, convert its energy to electricity, our highest form of useful energy, and do it without motion, pollution, or making a sound. We'll never run out of it. Its efficiency will only go up. Its cost will only go down. Some people would ask, in terms of our energy future, why are we working on anything else? Thank you. 